everyone. This is Alice Davis and I'm here with Led by Faith. Today we're going to be looking at the nativity where Jesus was born. In our culture, we come from a Western culture, and in our culture, things are done so differently than they ever were in Israel in Jesus' day. Today it is put that we have these wooden mangers with the straw in it, the hay, and that's what people, Westerners, believe that Jesus was put in a wooden stable, a wooden manger, and that that was the way it was done, when in fact that is not the way it was done. We're going to see today how it was done when Jesus was born. The name Bethlehem, I want to give some, I want, I'm going to bring some things to light so that some clarity is made in all this. And I could just keep going for weeks on this one because, um, because it just keeps delving into more revelation, more light, more insight, and more depth. But we're just going to do this today. And we'll get into the rest of it maybe another time. It's so exciting. The name Bethlehem. Why would God have Jesus born in Bethlehem? He knew the plan, will, and purpose that he had for Jesus all along. The name Bethlehem means house of meat. In Arabic, that's what it means. Jesus, in Jesus' day, when Jesus walked the face of the earth, he spoke Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And they knew all the languages because they were around them all the time. And in Arabic, Bethlehem means house of meat. In Hebrew, Beth, it's pronounced Bethlehem, and it means house of bread. Now, Bethlehem was about 10 kilometers, which was 6.2 miles from Jerusalem to the south of Jerusalem. Its population today is approximately 25,000 people. And we have a painting. It's a, it, I just printed it out. Uh, it's in the public domain. But I found this. This, this is a watercolor that was done. I believe it was a watercolor. Now this other one is a watercolor, I believe. But an artist drew this, and he drew it. It was Cornelius de Bruggen, and he did this in 1698. It's a picture of Bethlehem the way he saw it. He was actually there. And if you can see it, you can see that there are people in the field and doing different things, and this is Bethlehem in the background. When I discovered that the name Bethlehem means house of meat, and in Hebrew it means house of bread, some scriptures came, uh, scriptures came up to me that reminded me of this. And in John 6, 53, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Fairly, verily, which means truly, truly, 
I say to you, except you eat the flesh of the the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. In the complete Jewish Bible it says then Yeshua said to them, Yes indeed, I tell you that unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. And what he's talking about is partaking of the Word of God. When you read something, if you are a doctor and you're always studying uh, papers to know how to be a doctor and what to do, procedures and thus and so, then you have it in your mind and your heart how to be a doctor. An architect learns how to draw buildings and different things like that, bridges and things that are built. They learn how to do this, but they look at it, they study it, and it becomes a part of them. It comes into their mind and their heart, and then they're able to do what they have learned to do. But if you want to learn how to be a Christian, you can partake of the written word of God and you can have the spirit of life of Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, if you partake of my flesh and my blood. If you read in John 1.1, 1, 1, it's John tells us and it is the most straightforward scripture I know of. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we know that God gave His Word to mankind so that mankind could be saved, healed, filled, baptized in the Holy Ghost, delivered and set free. So that's why, that's why when he was born in Bethlehem, God had it set for him to be the meat and the bread of the people because they were heathen. Heathen people are immoral. There, it just means that they don't have morals like the Bible, like God said to have. That's why he gave us his word, so that we could morally behave correctly, okay, in a good way. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem. In Luke 2, 7, it gives the rendition of Jesus' birth. And we know that they went, Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem to pay taxes. And it says in verse 5 of Luke chapter 2, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now, she's at the point of giving birth, and they're still not married. She is still espoused, promised to him, given to him, to be his wife. In verse 6, it says, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Verse 7 says, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. Now this is where I want to get into it and show you this. In the CJB is a much closer rendition of what it truly meant. It says, and she gave birth to her first 
child, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and laid him down in a feeding trough because there was no space for them in the living quarters. In the days when Mary was, was here, lived here on earth, her house, as we can see from last week, that her home had been dug out of the rock, out of the earth. And they lived in that. They put columns in there to keep it, you know, make sure the roof stayed up and things like that and to dress it up. What I want, what Westerners have need to know is that uh, they don't do things here like they did in Israel in Jesus' day. They did not lay him in a wooden manger. They had, the innkeeper had a place where uh, they had dug out a stable. They dug out a stable for the animals to come in and get out of the weather, be in a dry, uh, arid place where they could not be so wet, you know, they, did, they weren't out in the rain, but they were taken care of. It was their way of making a barn, so to speak. In Jesus' day, a barn was a, it was a place that had been dug out into the rock, chiseled out into the rock and in, in a hillside sometimes. And they would chisel out seats so you could have a place to sit and they would make things of rock but when it came to the trough they took and made they chiseled out the place in the rock to make a trough so the animals could eat this is where they put it's called fodder is what the Jewish people called it it was, in the Hebrew, it's called fatne. Now, I'm a southerner, so I say it in a southern tone, so. But it's called fatne. It means to eat. It's a place to eat. And what was put in it was fodder. It's a manger, a stall. A crib is... Now, a crib to them was different than a crib to us. You put your baby in a baby crib. This was a crib where cattle were fattened and where provender provision was kept. Avas is the Hebrew word for to feed largely, to fatten cattle. So Jesus was born in a rock stall, put into a rock manger made out of stone, and he was, and it was a place where they fattened cattle or livestock. This is amazing. When you think about the Western idea of what we, what we have been tend, what we have tended to think and believe, compared to how it really was in Jesus' day, God had a reason why He sent Jesus at the time that He did. Because had He done it today, this is not the way it would have been done. So God knew the perfect time. I have this picture. This is a watercolor, and it was done by Vasily Polinov. And he did it on paper in 1882. This is Bethlehem. 
This is Bethlehem. Right here. In 1882. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is the grotto of underneath. This is the grotto underneath the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem, Israel, where Jesus was born. You see, this is rock. All this is rock. Now, they've gone in and put benches in it and things like this, put some doors back here and things like this because they actually have services here, okay? But this is largely a lot what it would have looked like when Mary and Joseph went into the stall and, got, and Mary gave birth to Jesus. This is what a lot of it would have looked like in that day. It wouldn't have been all decorated with gold and everything else and curtains and all this. It was a place where animals were fed, okay? And Jesus was born where animals were fed. That's the whole reason he came. Now this is a photo that was taken in 1882. I think it's 1880, in the 1880s. It's the interior of the Church of Nativity in 1882. This is the floor where they walk. They still walk there today. But this door right here, you go down into the earth to get through this door. And this door is the exit from the crib where Jesus was born. And this is the Catholic section. They have four different religions that live, monks that live in the Church of Nativity. The Catholic, the Armenian, I think Muslim, and there's another one there. But what I'm saying is the cave that Jesus, the stall that Jesus was born in, was dug into the earth. He wasn't born on top of the ground in a house. He was born in a stall that had been dug into the earth into a manger where animals, the heathen, fed and then brought out into the open. That is just amazing. This is, they believe this is the crib where he was laid in swaddling cloths when she gave birth to him. This is a crib. This is a crib where you fed fodder to cattle. And he lay in this crib right here. When he, she laid him in this when he was born. Isn't that amazing? He wasn't laid in a wooden manger, a wooden manger for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that came to save the heathen of the world so they could become Christians and go to heaven and be with Father God for eternity. That is amazing. So, the nativity, when you see the nativity from now on, you won't ever think of it as a, an away in the manger kind of thing because the manger was a stone trough. And I was looking online, and they actually have one that is huge. sits on top of the ground. It's made of stone or whatever they made it, concrete or whatever, but they actually feed cattle out of that one. 
and it's in Arizona. And that's a Western idea, but it came off of this one right here. When God, God took Adam from the earth. It says that he made, he made him from dust. Adam, th this is so, everything Jesus did represents something that happened in the garden. Something that God did in the garden because he is the restorer of the breach. He has done everything so that everything for mankind is totally healed and restored to its full potential use. Glory to God. And to think that he was born to us, we would see this as a cave. Would you not see this as a cave? But it's not a cave. It's a room that was built for animals to come in from outside and eat their meals. Provision was given to the animals in this so that they could live. <laughs> it is amazing what God can show you, isn't it? Well, I appreciate you joining me here today. I hope you got something really good out of it. And just when you think about Christmas, think more about what Jesus really did. What he, what he, what he did, how he came. And that it, we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. It's the way we celebrate it. And it's all about him. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Well, I hope you've gotten something really good out of today. Join us again next week. We will go even further with more than we ever have before. And this is Led by Faith.